Hey guys, it's Lauren here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a while since I've done a wrap up video because I was on break and I literally just started school at the end of the month. I had so much time to read. So I managed to read a decent amount of books, enough books for a wrap up. I, I can't promise this is gonna happen again for the next three months, but <laughs> since it has happened now, I decided I'd do a wrap up video for you guys. Without further ado, let's just get right into it. This one should be obvious. The first book I read this year was Take a Hand, Danny Brown. I talked about this in my first week of the new year vlog and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I've pretty much talked about it in every other video since then too. It's a romance, it's a really healthy romance um, as a black woman lead. I feel like I've talked about it a lot, so I don't really wanna talk about it again. Just know it's like, very high high ranked on my favorite book so that's my endorsement you guys should go read it the next book i read was these fine delights these fine delights is by chloe gong and it's basically a romeo and juliet retelling that takes place in 1920s shanghai yeah the premise sounded really interesting um basically follows um juliet coming back to america and kind of having to deal with this series of events that have to do with this monster uh, like phantom creature it's kind of haunting all of the citizens of shanghai and causing them to tear their throats out which is really fucking gruesome which is why it's called These Violent well Delights. Romeo and Juliet have to come together and like work together and so do their gangs in order to figure out uh, how to stop this incident and that's basically what the book is about. I'm gonna be completely honest, I had high hopes for this book and it didn't really meet my expectations. Um, I felt like the characters weren't very unique. I felt like the book was doing more telling than showing. Somehow the way the book was written, the characters didn't feel as fully fleshed out as I would have liked. The romance itself was very bland, very bleak. Um, I couldn't get into it, like there was nothing spicy about it, I guess you could say. I feel like it had like a lot of potential for me personally, it just didn't work. Um, I'm sure like it has been highly recommended by other people, so you should definitely probably still check it out. I just didn't personally work for me. Uh, that's These Fun Delights. The next book I read this month was With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I've been meaning to read this book for a while. I bought it like a year ago because Elizabeth Acevedo is one of my favorite authors of all time. She is a poet, also an author, but I think this is the one book she's written so far that was written the way a normal book was written. So it was written like paragraphs as opposed to poetry style. Because of that, I was really interested to decide to pick it up and it was very, very heartwarming. I had read it at the exact right time too. It was a heartwarming, charming story and I was reading it right after January 6th. And you guys know what happened on January 6th, the siege on the Capitol. I live in DC so that really like, yeah, it really fucked with my head and I just needed an outlet to get out of that. And What the Fire on High was my escape. So it's this really heartwarming story that follows this girl named Amani and basically she's a teen mom with this uh, two-year-old girl named Emma and it's like really cute but basically she's still going to school and she's dealing with her I think it's her junior or senior year and she's just trying to figure out what exactly she wants to do for life. Um, Amani is trying to decide whether or not she is going to follow her dream and become this cook or whether she is going to find a practical job that would support her and Emma like steadily throughout her entire life. Like, she doesn't see Emma as a burden but she does understand that she is part of the equation and so she is really just trying to like fight to figure out what exactly it is that she wants. There's also a little side romance on the side. Um, I was really interesting because we followed a girl that like really liked to cook and her love for cooking basically came from her uh, respect and love for her family's heritage and their own traditional cooking. So yeah, it was a really heartwarming story, I would say. I feel like I read it at the right time. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'd say it's my favorite of Elizabeth Acevedo's books, but definitely delivered because obviously it's Elizabeth Acevedo. The next book I read, I didn't plan on reading actually, but for some reason I was just drawn to it and it was Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. I know that Jason Reynolds is like literally one of the best YA authors of all time and I've been known that but for some reason I hadn't read him until this book. The funny thing is it was recommended by my like literally my high school librarian in like my sophomore year um but I was a dumbass and I decided not to pick it up but I ended up buying the book last year I believe. So Long Way Down in case you didn't already know it's another book written in prose and it basically follows the story of this kid whose brother was uh murdered in front of him by a gang. Basically there's this set of rules he has to follow. This like set of unset rules that's supposed to be followed in his neighborhood. It basically states that he has to take revenge on the people that killed his brother. An eye for an eye. So he finds the gun that his brother had in his room and he takes it onto this elevator. Like, the entire book follows him in this elevator. He ends up meeting a ton of people in the elevator and going through some sort of like psychological warfare in his own mind about whether or not he's actually gonna like go through with the deed because of this set of um, unsaid rules that has been followed for years and generations in his neighborhood. 
neighborhood or whether or not he's gonna do something else. And that's basically the entirety of the book. I feel like this is as much as I can say about spoiling anything. I don't know, the book literally just blew my mind. It was an instant five stars. Um, the way it was written, the poetry, I actually annotated it, which I rarely ever do with books because I feel like annotating it just makes me feel like I'm in school. Not a good vibe, but it was amazing. It was literally amazing. It was such a quick read. I think I read it in like a day. Highly recommend you reading it if you haven't yet. And it's a really fast read. So if you're looking for something light that will still, you know, fuck you up kind of up there, Jason Reynolds, go ahead. Uh, the next book I read was Ready Player One. Yeah, Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I picked this book up mainly because, well, honestly, I don't know why. It just looked fun. It follows the story of this boy who lives in the future in like 2040 or something like that. Like basically ahead of our own times in a world where like most of the world basically takes place in this virtual reality because the world itself is going to shit. So everyone's kind of like becoming escapist and escaping into this virtual world created by their version of Tony Stark, which I believe that person's name is Halliday. Halliday, the Tony Stark of their world. He created this treasure hunt within that virtual world that would give people access to his leftover money and treasures because he recently died and people have been looking for it for fucking like years including the main character this boy the protagonist eventually he becomes the first one to find a clue and that would lead to the leftover money by this holiday character and that's basically where the story takes off it was pretty entertaining i liked it because it was so immersive into 80s culture because that's when the uh rich guy of the world holiday that was when he was born that was the era he grew up in so there's a lot of 80s culture in the uh virtual world and there are a lot of specific references. I found it really cool even if I didn't understand like 70% of it because there was something about like the way the world was written. It was very specific, very immersive, that was very interesting. Um, the story itself I found kind of lacking in some ways. I think I didn't necessarily, I think this is just a personal thing because like honestly I feel like the character was very <laughs> very real. He was written very real as a teenage boy but I didn't like the protagonist that much and that probably like took me off the story a little. Um, I also didn't like the romance I guess you could say. It's not like it's the main part of the story but it's like a side defining part of the story it'd say if it was frank it'd be like the third most important topic of the story the romance and the romance itself wasn't that good because first of all i guess maybe because the protagonist is part of the problem it was also kind of an insta love thing and i'm not i mean i don't know i don't really have a problem with insta love but this one wasn't the best so i didn't enjoy that there was also this thing with one of the characters who turned out to be black that's all i'm gonna say there but i found that to be a little weird the way the author wrote about it it was just strange the way he inserted it anyway Anyway, all I'm gonna say is race somehow plays a plot twist at the end of the book. It's a little weird. It kind of blew me a little, but that's it. I would highly recommend you reading it. Um, it just wasn't for me. One of these days maybe stuff will work for me, but just not today. The next book I read was Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. This is the first James Baldwin book I just had to pick up. And it follows the story of this guy named Dan. He's white, he's also gay and closeted. He escapes from his home in America to France in order to just like escape from his actual life. I feel like he's just kind of escaping from himself in some way. And when he's in France, he like club pops a lot he's kind of just a partier and there he ends up meeting Giovanni who is this bartender at one of the bars he ends up going to and they immediately hit it off despite this kind of like love story that's taking place uh, there's a really tragic end waiting at the end and it's kind of been clued to the audience when you're like reading literally from the very beginning you could tell something awful is gonna end up happening to Giovanni yeah that's basically the premise of the story it was really good it was really good all James Baldwin's books I believe are like pretty short so it was like a really short read I read it in a day uh but it fucked me up it fucked me up not gonna lie I I had a little sad spiel and I ended up watching an anime movie in order to make up the fact that I was so fucking sad. Um, but it was really well written. It just made you question a lot about the motives of people and like why people do the things that they do. It also like, it's weird because it's also one of those books where like, there are a ton of characters that do terrible things but you don't necessarily hate them because in some way you understand them. I don't know, James Baldwin had a really weird way of doing that and he's also just a really good writer because the prose was amazing. It's another book that I actually highlighted this month which is new. I highlighted it twice in one month, that's insane. It was insanely good. I don't know what else to say. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. 10 out of 10 would recommend you checking that out. If you haven't checked out James Baldwin yet, I'm definitely gonna read more from him because that book was amazing. The next book I read was A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. This is a really magical school in Britain. It's a school like where they have to go in order to not necessarily learn magic, but in order to just like get their credentials as wizards or as mages or whatever it is that they call themselves. The whole goal of that school is to graduate, which essentially just means surviving, going to the school in the first place because the school itself is trying to kill them. So that's the premise of the book. And we followed the main character who is 
this uh like the south asian girl and she basically is trying to survive on her own and just like live her own life and just i don't even know she doesn't really know what she's gonna do after school because not only do they have to survive the school they have to find ways in order to like survive on their own after they leave school in order to do that they need certain connections and this girl the protagonist just doesn't have those connections all she knows is, is that she wants to survive and somehow like she'll figure it out once she leaves somehow the hero of the school um i guess you could say the harry potter of the school i forgot what his name is but he basically saves her like a ton of times and she's really annoyed with him because she doesn't want to owe people anything because the school because like the whole point of it is survival it means a lot if someone saves your life like obviously it means you owe them in some way and she didn't want to owe anyone anything so she's immediately annoyed with that boy and he actually ends up being the love interest of the book i just really enjoyed the banter and relationship between that girl and like the boy their love interest the relationship was just really interesting to read i think it was the main reason i stayed also the fact that the school itself was trying to kill the students that was a new concept i never really thought of it was really entertaining and made me smile and laugh a lot the next book I read this month were actually the new adult reads by now the video already should be out but I read new adult for the first time in yeah ever so these are the books that I ended up reading for that video uh the first one is the problem with forever by jennifer l armentrot i didn't really know this when i first started the book jennifer l armentrot also wrote uh from blood and ash i believe that book is called and it was this really popular uh, romance fantasy book that came out last year i'm not sure if i'm gonna check it out because honestly i didn't really like the problem with forever the only thing i can say about it is that it was unoriginal like i ended up giving it one star because it was so freaking unoriginal i said it in the video but it reminded me of fan fiction i would have read when i was in fucking like middle school school or something and I've just I've read that plot before a million times and nothing about the characters really stood out I also didn't like the fact I'm not sure if I said this in the video but like the book somehow talked about racism but it didn't talk about racism you know like systematic oppression kind of like the pipeline thing where they looked at kids of color and if they act a certain way or are from a certain neighborhood they're immediately marked on a fucking paper and basically the police keep an eye on them until after they graduate it included all of themes like that in the book but somehow the author never explicitly said racism and that kind of bothered me because like why the fuck not like it's literally you're saying racism without saying racism that got on my nerves a little too especially since the protagonist was this really innocent white girl that somehow didn't really know shit about sex i was like okay yeah, no, nah, I'm not fucking with it. The next book I ended up reading for this was Play by Kylie Scott. I loved the book. I loved the book so much. It was very spicy, very juicy. Uh, it involved a drummer. I'm not really sure what else to say because I don't even know. I feel like it was a fever dream when I read it. But I really enjoyed it because of the banter between the two characters that were supposed to fall in love. It felt very like organic and entertaining to watch. So I ended up really enjoying it. And yeah, no, I gave that five out of five stars. It was really good. So I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a romance to look into. It's also part of the series apparently and it's actually the second book that's similar to like the Brown Sister series in the sense that like they're in a series but they're also can be read separate as like independent books so you can also check out the entire series as well i definitely will as soon as they're available at the library so yeah yeah <laughs> that's play by Cody scott and finally the last book i read for the month was london bound by nana malone this book took me by surprise because for one it was a new adult book with that actually had a black face on it I was not expecting to see that but i was not unhappy about that at all i ended up actually really enjoying this book but i still gave it three stars just because i didn't really like the love of interest he was kind of like this rich white guy that kept a ton of secrets i didn't really like how the climax went because it felt like it was sped up like the climax was really sped up because there was this conflict about uh the secrets that the love interest lex was keeping from abby uh the protagonist like somehow she just instantly forgave them don't really understand it the romance itself wasn't really the best but i think the thing that made me really enjoy the book was abby as a protagonist i really enjoyed her story because she was escaping from this abusive relationship back at home and deciding to follow her passion and her dream despite like what her family might have thought of her and that was in order to be a photographer so she ends up doing this photography program in london hence the title london bound and there she pursues it like what for all we actually see her doing it and i feel like in a lot of new adult books that at least i tried reading they didn't actually show the protagonist female protagonist the story they didn't show them actually trying to do things on their own do anything other than pursue this romance and abby did actually have that which i enjoyed but i don't know the relationship itself the way the book was resolved was a little too fast and it didn't make that much sense to me but i did enjoy reading it so three stars it's not like a bad three stars it's a good three stars yeah that's all the books i read in january thank you guys for watching if you like this video you should like comment and subscribe mm -hmm. follow me on my mediums they are both linked down below and i will see you guys in the next one Bye bye